Today, I'm very happy to be reviewing a product that legitimately is the best in its class. This product does a thing better than anything else in its class. And it's something that I have wished for years and years that someone would make. Unfortunately, it's about four years too late for a lot of people. And so a lot of people are going to be like, oh yeah, that would have been great if it had come out four years ago. But today, I've moved on. Which one of those people you are? You'll have to watch the video to find out. I'm Joshua Bardwell. You're going to learn something today. This is the product that we're looking at today. This is the SkyZone M5F FPV monitor. And in order to demonstrate to you what it is, we'll just turn it on. I'm just going to single press, then long press the power button. It took me a while to figure that out. I was like long pressing and holding. It's like a DJI. Single press, then long press, and it turns on. And you can see that what we've got here is an LCD monitor, a 5-inch LCD monitor with a built-in analog video receiver. If you're familiar with SkyZone goggles, then the interface to this menu is going to be very familiar to you. Here on the back, we've got a menu button. We've got a DVR button. It takes an SD card here on the side, and it will record DVR. And we've got a jog wheel, clickable jog wheel you can use. Uh, and if we click that jog wheel, it brings up the menu, and we can change the band and channel so we can switch channels and we can change the band as well although i'm going to just leave it on race band which is probably what most people are going to do um, it is an analog receiver uh, and the reason that i'm so excited about this is that here's what let me show you let me show you hold on i've had this little screen for freaking ever and it's one of the most useful things I have on my bench, at least it used to be. Um, this little analog screen, same thing. It's just you change the band and channel. It's battery powered. The battery is super old and worn out. As soon as you take it off the charger, it just shows that it's dead. So I have to leave it plugged into USB all the time. But it is super useful to have one of these little screens on your bench, like when you're working on a quadcopter. If I'm building a quadcopter, if I'm troubleshooting a quadcopter, I can't tell you how many times I've like just had goggles on my face while I'm fiddling around, and it's just kind of a pain in the butt to be like, uh, mm, uh, mm. It's really great to have a little screen that you can just see what your camera's doing, you can see your OSD, you can go into your menus, you can do all the things you need to do and not have to actually have goggles on your face. So the main reason I keep a screen like this around is the ability to easily build and troubleshoot on the bench. But of course, we can also use this for spectating. Uh, if you're out there flying and an analog pilot's in the air, you can tune them in and you can be watching without, again, having to put your goggles on your face. You know, earlier I complained about the battery uh, in this little guy. Uh, it's really nice that the battery on the M5F screen, it takes an 18650, a standard, 18650 cell. It is rechargeable. There's a USB-C port here on the side that uh, charges with it built in, uh, and it runs for, I haven't done a full rundown test, but it runs for a few hours at least on a single 18650 cell. It depends on the quality of the cell, of course. If we press the menu button, we can get the full setup menu, and again, no features have really been left out. All of the features you expect from a SkyZone goggle or display are here. So we can switch RF modes, and in fact, I will probably... Oh, AV input? There's an AV input! Oh my goodness, there's a 3.5 millimeter AV input we can use with an external display. I don't know why you would do that. Playback from the DVR. Uh, oh! You can use a USB drive. You can plug it into a USB and offload the files from the DVR uh, without taking the SD card out by putting it into U-Disk mode. Uh, I will probably leave it in RF racing mode because uh, pretty much always I'm using channels in race band and uh, there's no sense in, in trying to like let yourself see in, race, in, in racing mode. It only will go into race band. It will not give you the option to change out of race band, which is probably what most people want. We've got full image settings here, brightness, contrast, saturation, hue, and sharpness, if we want to tweak the LCD display. It is just an LCD display. It's not something fancy like an OLED, but like it gets super bright. I've got the brightness turned way down for my camera, so if you do decide to take it outside in the sunshine, it will be bright enough to see everything uh, that you want to see, even in the sunshine. Um, and the display, Good, the display aspect ratio can be changed. If you fly analog, you probably do a lot of flying with 
4.3 aspect ratio cameras, and we can just change that so the image isn't stretched. Very nice. But the real reason that I am so excited about this product, or at least I would be even more excited about it if it had come out like four years ago, is this. If we go into the menu, look what we got here. Mix 1, Mix 2, Mix 3, and Diversity. Do you see that we've got these image modes here? What that means is that this is a steady view mixing receiver. What's that mean? And why is it so good? See, traditionally, analog receivers have had two antennas. And if you go way back in time, the way that it worked is called diversity. What that means is that you've got two receivers and two different antennas. Maybe you've got one antenna horizontal and one antenna vertical. Maybe one antenna has like a 360 degree omni uh, antenna on it. And one has like a directional antenna pointing more out front. You've got two antennas and two receivers and the uh, module will switch between those antennas based on which one has the strongest signal at any given time. And the problem with that is that when it switches between the antennas, there's a moment where it like shuts off one switch and opens up another switch, and that's a slight disruption in the signal. And that manifests as like white flashes or other sort of glitching in the screen. So diversity switching, uh, was okay, but not the best. The best type of analog receiver came along with Immersion RC Rapid Fire, and Immersion RC Rapid Fire does what's called frame combining and sync reconstruction. This is also the same thing that TBS Fusion does, and then later down the line, the same thing that the SkyZone SteadyView receiver does. And without going into too many technical details about what sync reconstruction and frame combining are, suffice it to say that we have two receivers, two antennas, and instead of picking one and then picking the other and switching between them, we take both of them, we take the best of both, and we put it together, and there's no diversity switching, there's no flashing. The result is a much more clear and stable image under much wider conditions. This is the state of the art for analog FPV receiver modules. And until now, at least as far as I can tell, nobody put a module like this into a little handheld battery powered portable display. If you wanted to use a display like this, you had to use some crappy, poor sensitivity, terrible range, diversity receiver. They were no good as actual FPV receivers. You were giving up all this performance because you wanted the convenience of a screen that you could hold in your hand or use on the bench. And now you don't have to do that anymore you can get a nice, convenient screen with a battery that lasts a good long while and a really, really good state-of-the-art SteadyView receiver in one, in one package. <sighs> Which would have been really exciting four years ago or la la later when all I flew was analog. Because in 2019, DJI released their digital FPV system, and myself and a whole lot of other people have moved to digital systems. DJI, Walksnail, HD Zero. I have a few analog quads. Well, you saw me using one earlier in the video, but for the most part, what I fly is digital. And if you're like that and all you fly is digital, then this is too little too late. There's really no point in this. But if you still fly a lot of analog quads, if you, uh, well, <laughs> A lot of people just don't have the money to go to digital. Analog's way less expensive and gets the job done. If you fly micros like Tiny Whoops or if you fly racing drones and you're still mostly on analog, this is a really, really exciting development. It's a luxury because if you have analog goggles, you can just put them on your face and do whatever you need to do. But sometimes it's nice to just be like, oh yeah, he really hit that gate. Ooh, he hit that gap. Ooh, my OSD is misconfigured. I can just fix it real quick without having to stick goggles on my face. And that's where the Skyzone M5F really, really comes in. If you're interested in picking up the Skyzone M5F, there are links in the video description below. Those links aren't just a convenience to help you like find the product. Those are affiliate links. And what that means is that when you click that link and then make any purchase at the affiliated vendor, I get a little commission, some I would call it a kickback. You could call it whatever you like. It's a very, very simple way for you to support the work that I do here by clicking my affiliate links, 
than doing your normal shopping. doesn't matter what you buy. As long as you spend money after you click the affiliate link, some of that money goes to me. And it's a small amount, but it really does add up. And it really means a lot if you decide to do that. If you do decide to pick this up, you will also need to get a couple of antennas. I'll put links down below also to a couple of antennas that you might get on a budget. You don't need to spend a ton of money, but you are. I probably would put directional antennas on this because most of the time you're not going to be using this to fly off of, I would imagine. You're going to be like spectating. And, and so it'll be pretty easy for you to like just point it over at, and then again, you're going to want low profile. I don't know. I'll think about it and I'll put some recommendations for antennas in the video description as well. That's it. That's going to do it for this video. Uh, I'm going to put a link on screen to a video going into more detail about like why the steady view receiver, the rapid fire and the fusion and other receivers like that are so freaking, what, what are they doing? I actually did a deep dive a little while back with a guy. He had an oscilloscope. I assume that means he's pretty smart. And I'll put a link to that video up there um, as well. If you're interested in picking up a set of goggles with a steady view receiver in them, um, I'll put a link to my review of the SkyZone SkyO4X Pro. I'll see you there.